I get a lot of PMs about modeling in Houdini. And as with Maya, um, if you know Maya and you pick up another package, you can probably get by. But with Houdini, it's a little different because it's completely procedural and it works with nodes and, and so do other apps, but not the way Houdini does. And Houdini is more than capable. It's just a little difficult for a lot of people. So we're going to go in and model this, the, the common chair that we've modeled in Modo and Silo and everywhere else. And we're going to do it inside Houdini just so we can show you how it works, okay? So the first thing I want to do is go to my Create Shelf, hold the Control key, and hit Box, okay? So let's zoom in here and see what we got here. Let's go to Smooth Wire Shaded, which we are on, okay? Now let's go to our four, hit the four key to go into primitive mode. I'm going to go to Polygon, and I want to select Edge Loop. And I want to put a couple edge loops in here, okay? I'm going to put one about right here, one about right here, one about right here, one back here, like so, and then maybe one close to the bottom here, like that. Now you can see we have our mesh cut up, okay? So let's go back to the number four key, okay? And let's select these primitives here right in the middle and delete them, okay? Well, there we go. Now we got the beginnings of our chair. So let's go ahead and hit the three key. Let's select this back edge, go to our polygon shelf, and let's hit extrude, poly extrude, okay? And I want to bring this straight down, like this. Towards, you know, kind of even here, like so. Okay, now let's select this edge, poly extrude. We're going to do the same exact thing. Okay, now that's, we don't have to be perfectly even because we're going to join the points, okay? Let's, let's do this one, poly extrude. Okay. There we go, now we got those pulled down there. So let's go ahead and hit the two key to go to our point mode. And let's zoom in here and let's select these two points. I'm going to come up to my polygon shelf and select fuse. And that's going to add a fuse node. Then I'm going to come over here to my distance slider and slide it up until they connect. Boom. Okay. So now let's, let's continue on. Let's do the same thing here. Let's select those two verts. Fuse. Of course, we'll drag our slider until they do fuse like that. Okay. Let's grab these, these two here. And we'll fuse those. I think I've grabbed both of them there. And I did. There we go. And now let's grab these last two here. And we'll hit fuse once again. Drag up our slider and fuse those together. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and select this point. And let's look and see how uneven we are here. We're looking pretty even. Let's translate it up just a tad. Like so, as well as this one over here. Okay. Now, we need to fill that in. We can do one of several ways. And we're going to do it the easy way, okay? So I'm going to select this edge here. Hit the 3 key to go to edge mode. Let's select this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge, okay? And I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to hit poly cap. Boom. And that fills that in for me. Okay, so now I can grab this edge back here, and I can adjust on it. Make it a little more even. Okay. Now all we need to do is add some loop slices, which is not easy. Let's go back to our edge loop, select it, and we're going to go in here and put one right close to this edge. We're going to put one right close to this edge, the edges of our handles. Okay, let's put one down here, like so. And of course, we're going to put some around the inside, up and down like that. And let's go here, put one here. Let's put one back here, 
here and towards the back there. Now if you can see where we got all of our lines right up through here, everything's looking pretty good there. Let's go to primitive, our primitive mode there by hitting the four key, okay? And let's select that primitive and let's transform it out. Select that primitive, transform it up, like so. Okay, now what we need to do is just kind of subdivide it. So let's go ahead and right click, select all geometry, or you can hit Command A, and I'm going to say subdivide. Now you can see when I do that, it's subdivided my chair, and if I need more geometry, I can come in over here and up my depth. And now as you can see, we're getting a more subdivided chair. Now, if you want to go in here, for instance, let's back this off. And you want to add a smooth node, you can do that. As you can see that gives us a totally, totally different look here. So you can also paint with your smooth if you want to. Um, you can smooth points by painting by using the sculpt tool on the model tab shelf which is a C. Where's the sculpt tool? Right there. You can use the sculpt tool and um, on, on this model shelf and in the viewer you can use your far right mouse button and, and you can set one of the, the mouse buttons to, to smooth points and, and you can use the opacity control to set the amount of smoothing. So. I just wanted to let you understand that there is a difference between subdivision, which is what we're doing right here in this tab by upping our depth, and smoothing. Okay, so if we go back to this tab here, you can see it's all procedural. We're back here. You can use your sculpt um, command. Now you can see we have this little sculpting thing here. And um, shift left button, you drag and make your little thing bigger. Okay. Shift right click clears it. Okay. But we're not going to get into the gist of smoothing. But you, you can see here I'm smoothing this out with our my sculpt tab. And I'm not going to get into the, the uh, smooth node or the sculpt node. We'll do that in another video. I just wanted to show you that that is an option. So let's go back to our subdivide node. Because some people ask me, hey, what's the difference between smooth? and subdivide and there is a difference so let's go back to our subdivide node and here we go here is our wonderful little chair that we've built inside of Houdini what can we do that's funny here what can we do just as a joke uh, like, let's catch it on fire we'll go to our pyro shelf we'll say mm, we'll just hit flames now we're gonna have to select an object to, to burn so let's select our chair and hit return. Okay, well, there we go. Let's go ahead and hit play. And whoa, we got a burning chair. It's that easy. We'll let it go through here a minute. Let's stop it and let's grab a quick screen render. And there we go. Oh, we got a burning chair. But the reason I'll show you this example is because this could be your name. This could be anything. The possibilities are endless with Houdini. And their modeling works okay. I do like how they model. It's all good and everything. I do wish they could improve upon their modeling just a little bit. Um, but, you know, it's not, not that big of a deal. I mean, once you, certain people know how to work Houdini, I guess, and... Once they get used to it, they don't want to start changing up how it works, okay? So, but there you go. <laughs> There's our, chair, our burning chair. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. If that's okay with you guys. Because I want to show you guys. What the chair, mainly how to model this chair here. I didn't want to go in and. And just and, and it's not this is not about fire or brimstone or anything like that. 
This is about modeling the chair in Houdini. And nothing more, nothing less. So, um, let's try not to read too much into that fire thing there, okay? Because I don't know, I'm just, I'm just goofing off with you there. So there is our chair. And I hope you've learned something. And maybe, if you all want it, we can model some more stuff inside Houdini if you want to. It's up to you. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy modeling.